This was supposed to be a nice distraction from the league. Could it have gone any worse? Hello everybody, it's Ian here once again from OUFC Fan View, and it's time for another review of another Oxford United game. Today, it was FA Cup Round 3 for the Yellows as they travelled away to Coventry City. After Oshin Smith's Thunderbolt winner against Charlton on New Year's Day, Oxford fans travelled in good numbers. 3,000 of them travelled to Coventry expecting what might be a giant killing against the side going well in the Championship. But... Whew, Coventry had other ideas and then some. It turned out to be a disastrous day for Oxford United as we were absolutely thumped on the pitch. Bad news off the pitch. Injury problems mounting as well. We'll get into all of it, but the scoreline read a pretty depressing one. But congratulations to Coventry. You storm into round four. It finished. Turn your eyes away, Oxford fans. Coventry 6, Oxford United 2. So this game highlighted a huge golfing class between the Championship and the League 1 and a stark reminder to Oxford United that if we do get promoted this season, how much we need to strengthen in order to be competitive to play in the Championship and survive there. But we'll go over everything involved in this game. I'll go over team news, I'll give my review of the game, and I'll give my final thoughts at the end. You can jump to any point of the video if you wish, because I do put timestamps down below. But if you do that, and I need it today, especially after getting absolutely battered in the cup, not much good stuff going on. I need those likes, so please hit that like button. That does help me out a lot. And if you do like the content, consider subscribing. So let's start with the team news for Oxford United and two big changes to the side that beat Charlton on New Year's Day. Let's start with the biggest of them all and that is no James Beadle in goal. Simon Eastwood is between the sticks. Is James Beadle ill? Maybe nursing an injury while well, he didn't even make the bench. There was no Comment from Oxford United about him being ill or injured. So all you can theorise without it being confirmed. It may have been confirmed by the time this video goes live. But I don't have the information at the moment. But all you can assume is that he is going to go back to Brighton. And he will be loaned out to a championship club. So it's very, very safe to assume that James Beadle has played his last game for Oxford United. We will circle back to that in the final thoughts. So again, you can skip to that if you wish to. But also, Oxford were missing their skipper, Elliot Moore. Out with an illness. So he is a huge loss at the back. Jordan Thornley, who's only just recovered from an injury himself with a back spasm comes in to play at centre-back. It's Oxford going with that 3-5-2 formation again, which they played against Charlton, which meant Austin Smith, who was the hero and the match winner that day, continues in defence. And Oxford, you can name more subs in the FA Cup. So under-18 defender Richard McIntyre makes the bench for Oxford United, which kind of shows you also how stretched we are. Moving on to Coventry City then, and Mark Robbins' Sky Blues are a formidable opponent. And even after an iffy start to the season, they've really found their groove in the championship as they try to mo uh, mount another promotion push. It's only one defeat from their last 11 games, and they've climbed up to 8th place. They do make three changes from the side that did beat Middlesbrough on New Year's Day. But last year, Mark Robbins made a lot more changes, and they lost at this stage. So he's not going to make that same mistake again. But they have made a change in goal with Ben Wilson coming in. Joel Latiboudier comes into defence and Casey Palmer plays on the left wing. Mercifully for Oxford United, top scorer Hadji Wright is out of this Coventry lineup with an injury, but it is still a very strong side with Ellis Sims leading the line and Japanese winger Sakamoto also in fine forms with two goals in that win over Middlesbrough. What a start to this game with three goals in the first 10 minutes. It's Coventry take the lead after eight minutes they were pretty much in control for those eight minutes but from their first corner it's a ball into the near post it's the guy who's come into the side in defense Latiboudier who gets to the net he gets to the near post wins the header but it very softly just bounces into the ground and up and into the goal and you're just like oh really that's gone in? How's that gone in? Like, why has no one gone off across the challenge and in? Why has everyone just stood and watched it loop into the back of the net? It's already going to be a tough game. You've given yourselves a mountain to, cry, to climb. But the perfect response from United. A minute later, Branigan wins a slide tackle on the edge of the area. He gives the ball to Marcus McGuay. Marcus McGuay 
feeds Harris on the edge of the box and Harris tries his luck. Big deflection, spins into the back of the net. Harris with another goal. Oxford got it back to 1-1 very, very quickly, less than a minute after going behind. A couple of weeks ago, would Harris have take, even taken that shot? Great to see him score. Surely we're going to hold on to this. Nope. 2-1 Coventry from virtually from the kickoff. They get the ball down into the wide left. Oxford's right. We seem to struggle when players attack us down that left-hand side or there, Oxford's right. And this was no different today. Ellis Sims, he seems to wriggle free from Smith, from Stevens, gets into the penalty area. He can just put a ball right the way across goal and Sheaf is arriving at the back post. And 10 minutes, it's 2-1 to Coventry. What an absolutely bonkers start. I don't remember a game like that no one's not coming to mind you can let me know in the comments but you had disappointment joy and disappointment all in the space of two minutes and Oxford didn't have much time to kind of lick their wounds and kind of fight feel their way into the game before they were 3-1 down and this was an absolute beauty this was a lot like Oshin Smith's goal he scored against Charlton um, it's similar it maybe even be a little bit better than that goal but it's from another one of the players who's come into the side so Mark Robbins will be really happy with the changes that he made it's Casey Palmer about 25 yards out no one around him he just thought thinks why not and he smashes it into the top of the net uh, a beautiful strike Eastwood absolutely no chance and you're already fearing this could get very ugly for the next 15 minutes it's Coventry, maybe even 20, was so dominant. Oxford could barely get out of their half. You saw it's very similar to when we played against Derby. Oxford was so deep that they couldn't even break when they did get the ball back. They had no out ball. And you just and was, they tried to keep a little bit of possession when they did win the ball, and, but they just really could make any progress, even up to the halfway line. Sometimes they'd even put 10, 15 passes together without getting absolutely anywhere. Coventry's press was very, very impressive. But then 35 minutes, Maybe Oxford did, maybe Coventry's level dipped a little bit. Oxford did have a couple of decent chances, a couple of decent possessions. As Stevens played a ball into Harris, and his header, cushioned header into the middle of the goal, was just a little bit too heavy for Rodriguez. But as soon as Oxford got on the front foot, Coventry nearly got back and made it 4 1. Ellis Sims in a foot race with Jordan Thornley, but Thornley just did well enough, and Sims blazed it over the bar. Right on the stroke of half time, Josh McEachern brought, brought down Sakamoto on the edge of the box. You would have had to think, with Josh McEachern already on the booking, this was a silly challenge. And if it would have been nil-nil or one nil, it shouldn't make a difference, should it? But you have to think that it could have been a second yellow for McEachern there, with the referee choosing leniency and Vanavite VK. Put the free kick wide for Oxford United. So Oxford went in 3-1 down at half-time and Coventry completely deserved it after the bonkers start to the game and then Palmer's strike. Beautiful strike gave Sky Blues the breathing room that they needed and they even could be say they're even playing within themselves after that third goal went in. Oxford really struggled with Coventry's press and the way Coventry won the ball back so quickly after losing it was very, very impressive. But it did start towards the end of the half. They did start to put a few moves together. They did continue to play their, tried to play their football as well, which was encouraging. You're kind of clutching at straws a little bit in there as well. And it is good to see Mark Harris getting another goal. Still seems a long way for Oxford to get back into this one. But at 3-1, they have a sliver. Well, if Oxford had a sliver of hope... At half time, that got very quickly snuffed out by Coventry. Within five minutes of the first, second half starting, Coventry make it 4 1. It's a penalty. They get the ball into the box. Palmer gets there about the same time as Brown. It's a 50 50 ball, but Palmer got his shot away. Brown didn't win the ball. It was a strange one because there really wasn't any protests from the players or anything, but the referee saw that as a foul and gave a penalty to Coventry and golden chance for them to really kill this game off. O'Hare, very calm, put Eastwood the wrong way, just rolled it into the opposite corner. Plain sailing for Coventry. So the game was done at 4-1. Coventry playing within themselves, but still playing some nice football, trying to carve, really carving Oxford open time and time again. Oxford forced to play to damage limitation. Not really much chance to get back into it. There was a good ball across the box by Bennett, which was just a little bit too 
hard for Rodriguez, but it was really chance after chance for Coventry, and it was just a matter of will they score more before the 90 minutes happened. But one player who did play quite well for Oxford when he came on was Tyler Goodrum. At least he showed a bit of life, a bit lively, you know what Tyler Goodrum's like, and he reduced the arrears, kind of seemingly out of nothing. Oxford win a corner, it's cleared to Goodrum on the edge of the box, he takes two bites of the cherry, but the second time it gets through and gets through Wilson into the back of the net. I'm not sure if Wilson Wilson saw this late, but it's one he might not want to see again because it seemed like he dived very, very late. It wasn't particularly hard, strong shot from Goodrum, but it found its way into the back of the net and maybe there's a glimmer of hope again for Oxford United, but sadly not. And things went from bad to worse because Coventry just upped their game a little bit. They kept the ball away from Oxford United. They took the sting out of Oxford United and then they came back with two goals for themselves. Coventry must have strung about 50. 20, 20 to 30 passes together. It seemed like they had the ball for ages and they worked the ball into the area and God and Cooley passed it through Eastwood and into the back of the net. And then on 88 minutes, the final goal of the game, Marcus McGuane losing the ball in midfield and it's played through to Godden, who finishes calmly to make it the very embarrassing scoreline of 6-2. Couple of good saves to redeem himself from Wilson at the end of the game and more bad news for Oxford at the end of the game. They were from Mills and they were from Goodrum. The first, second one from Goodrum was a very good save but Stan Mills went down injured after he took that shot there was nobody around him and he went down in serious pain stretched off with gas and air look you can only think that's a leg break you can only think that's a serious injury and then you just have to think is that the last we see of Stan Mills in an Oxford shirt a miserable afternoon for Oxford finally came to an end Coventry go through. Coventry deserve to go through. Let's go to the final thoughts. And let's start with the home side, Coventry City. A uh, fantastic victory for, for your team and your fans should be really happy about it. It, it. What does it mean in the grand scheme of things? Not much. And just like when we beat lower league opposition in round one and round two, probably not many people will even remember it come the end of the season. The league is still very much the priority for Coventry and getting into those playoffs and trying to get promoted back to the Premiership. But... That, if anything, showed what a golf of class you have over sides in League One and how you really put us to the sword, really controlled the game, completely outplayed us and did it with well, with ease and were playing within yourselves as well. But the thing that really impressed me about Coventry is I expected a side that would be good on the ball and play good football, but it was the way that you pressed Oxford and won the ball back and smothered us and didn't let us play at all. And the, the hard-working... Players like Sakamoto, Sheaf, Eccles, Palmer, O'Hare, just in behind Sims, really made it difficult to get at Oxford to get out of their own half at times. And even if we did make a couple of strides forward, we were very quickly forced to go back. And we just didn't have that outball throughout the game. An embarrassing scoreline from my point of view, but an excellent one for Coventry fans, considering you didn't even have Hadji Wright playing as well. But Coventry fans, let me know... Um, your thoughts on... Well, you can give me thoughts on this game. There's not really much to stew over in this game. But give me your thoughts on what you... The, how good Mark Robbins is doing. We know how good he's doing as well. Give me your thoughts on whether you think you're going to get promotion. Whether you think you're going to get into the playoffs. And what you need to do in January to strengthen. And again... Congrats. Hope you get a good tie in round four. Move on to Oxford United. And my goodness, these last few weeks have just been like one step forward, one step back. Or one glimmer of hope, one glaring slap in the face to bring us all back down to earth. And that is what today felt like. It just was miserable and horrible from the start of the game. As soon as you saw that lineup, and this is no disrespect to Simon Eastwood because he, he didn't do much wrong in the game at all. But as soon as you saw Beadle not there, all those fears that he was going to be loaned, go back to Brighton, were confirmed. And that we were going to be losing a goalkeeper that's been excellent for us for the first part of the season. So that's a huge hammer blow for Oxford. And then you see Elliot Moore out of the lineup as well with an illness. And that's just like... Oh, Crikey, we know how badly this side has struggled when Elliot Moore doesn't play, and we certainly struggled today. Would we have won the game with Elliot Moore playing? No, no, I can honestly say no. He's not going to make a four-goal difference, but he would have made Oxford more solid, and he's the skipper of the side and has arguably been one of our best players this season. Still look very vulnerable, balls coming into the box, as evidence from the first goal, but... 
Yeah, this game, there's such a really highlighted the golfing class between the two sides. And with Oxford really lacking pace from wide areas or up front, we really just could not get Coventry stretched. We couldn't get running, running the other way. We couldn't get them turned and we couldn't get them penned in at all. So it became even more doubly difficult to try and play our way through them like what we did against Charlton. And you really saw the limitations of this side and and there's not really much more Buckingham could have done I don't think uh, other than the team he could have picked I think it was solid enough I just think Coventry were far too strong for Oxford today and it was so very very naive to get back into it and then give Coventry that goal straight away just undid all the good work of getting it back to level level pegging I, I don't think there's going to be too many of us that are too bothered about this game in a couple of days I think we're going to be more bothered about how our squad's looking for the league games coming up for the Carlisle game coming up we've lost seemingly lost James Beadle which is a huge blow uh, you may have lost Stan Mills uh, now for the season that uh, yeah, could be him ruled out now which means we've got to get another player in to replace him we need some bodies in the door and we and we thought we might get some bodies in the door this week but that hasn't emerged isn't going to be one of those cases again where every single week we ask questions of when is the deal going to get done when's the deal going to get done and we get told it's close it's close maybe this week but this week just does not happen it will not be until the end of the window so after the positives of New Year's Day, we're really brought back down to earth with a bang. And I do feel a little bit sorry for Des Buckingham in this one. It was a tough game and Coventry really put us to the sword. And Oxford really need a response now uh, in the trophy, but definitely in that game away at Carlisle. It'll be interesting to see if Greg Lee and if Sam Long can come back into that one. Because I think just those two, unless you, you know what good player Greg Lee is, but Sam Long's experience could be important for Oxford during this time as well. And it'd be nice if we can get another couple of bodies in the bo in the box. I'm um, in the building, sorry. But another shout out for Mark Harris. I'm just going to say he, he got another goal today. In a tough afternoon, and he scored that he scored one of the goals, and I just think that if he wouldn't have got that goal against Charlton, he wouldn't have even tried that shot today. He would have looked to hold the ball up and play it wide or play it back to Brannigan, and that is a good sign that he is back, sort of sharp, willing to shoot, willing to have pot shots at goal, and we need that from Mark Harris, and hopefully that is the start of him now getting a few goals between now to the end of the season. Because don't be shocked, folks, if a striker isn't in the building for the Carlisle game, and don't be shocked if that is a pretty similar starting lineup that we play against Carlisle from what played today would make probably only Elliot Moore coming back into the back line. But a tough and difficult afternoon for Oxford United, which really could not have gone any worse. And we just have to quickly forget it and get over it. Uh, leave your comments down below and uh, let me know your thoughts on the Beadle situation and what players you think are going to come in. And I will do a review of the Carlisle game, but I might do something crazy and, and actually go to that game. I don't know yet. I don't know. So that review might be a little bit late if I do choose to go there. It's not quite as bad a journey from Sheffield as it is from Oxford, but it is still a lot further than you would imagine. That place does seem more north than is humanly possible in England. But uh, yes, thank you for watching. Tough day. Let's move on and get over it. And uh, as always, thanks for supporting the channel. I'll see you very soon.